Hi there, this is Prof. Johan from the Department of Chemical Engineering at the University of Pretoria. Welcome to my series on the Introduction to Chemical Engineering and Chemical Engineering Principles. In today's video lecture, I want to talk to you about crystallization and doing mass balances around crystallization. You remember the 10 steps for solving mass balances? Let's say you have them and you've started with them. Let's say you started with step 1 and you've gone through them and you end up with this. So we have a whole system, we have all the additional information, we have our base, and we know that there's 10 component balances, 5 sum of fractions, we're given the moisture content in the filter cake. Once we do a degree of freedom analysis, we see that the degree of freedom of the system is 0, and we know that we can solve it. So in this given system, there's 100 kilograms per hour of calcium sulfate anhydrous and water being fed to the system in a 50-50% ratio. This means that we have 50 kilograms per hour calcium sulfate and 50 kilograms per hour water entering the mixer. Exiting the mixer, we have a mixture of water and calcium sulfate dihydrate. How do we now do this? And you'll see that by looking at this example, why I said to you before that crystallization mass balances are, in my opinion, the introduction to mass balances with chemical reactions. So let's quickly solve this bit. So if we look at the molar masses given here, we know that the calcium sulfate is changed to calcium sulfate dihydrate by taking up some water. And it's taking up two moles of water for every mole of calcium sulfate that's being fed to the system. Now 50 kilograms of calcium sulfate is fed to the system. It means that we're feeding 3.68 kilomoles per hour. And we know that we will have... 0.735 and guys i'm using excel to calculate all my values which means i am not rounding i'm just reporting three decimal figures it means that we would be using 0.735 kilomoles per hour water to go to the crystal water of the calcium sulfate this equals to 13.325 kilograms per hour of the water that has been taken out of the liquid stream and becoming part of the calcium sulfate dihydrate crystals, which means this value is now going to be 63.235 kilograms per hour of calcium sulfate dihydrate. And the water is going to be 36. 765 kilograms per hour and the sum of this will still be equal to 100 which was coming in now let's look at the filter in the filter it says that after filtration the filter cake leaves the filter with 10 percent moisture or wet filter cake containing 10 percent moisture and the rest of the water is taken from the filter as a clear water stream what do we know all the calcium sulfate dihydrate going to the filter is leaving as filter cake plus an additional 10% as water trapped around this calcium sulfate crystals. This implies that 90% of that stream is calcium sulfate dihydrate. And we know that this must be equal to 63.235 kilograms per hour. So our total stream would be 63.235 over 0 0.9, which will be equal to 70.261 kilograms per hour. And the difference between the 70 and the 63 must be my water, which equals to 7.026, or you can see one-tenth of that kilograms per hour. Next, we need to calculate the water leaving the filter. Now, we know that 36.765 kilograms per hour water came into the filter press, and we know that 7.026 kilograms per hour water was left on the filter cake as part of the wet filter cake which means that 29.739 kilograms per hour of water left as water from the filter going further through the problem we then see that the wet filter cake is put into a dryer where we then get dry calcium sulfate dihydrate out of the system and water so we know immediately that this water is going to be 7.026 kilograms per hour and this must be equal to 63.235 kilograms per hour. In the next step, that calcium sulfate dihydrate is put into another dryer where we remove the water of crystallization, only a fraction of it, so that we end up with calcium sulfate hemihydrate. Now, there's several ways to do this. I prefer doing it this way, by saying 
that the molar mass of the calcium sulfate hemihydrate over the molar mass of the calcium sulfate dihydrate must be equal to the mass of calcium sulfate hemihydrate in the stream over the mass of calcium sulfate dihydrate in the stream. And from this, we can get the mass of the calcium sulfate hemihydrate in the stream to be 53.301 kilograms per hour. Now, the amount of water leaving our dryer will be the difference between those two values which will be equal to 9.926 kilograms per hour. Then we have the last dryer where we have the calcium sulfate hemihydrate being dried to form anhydrous calcium sulfate and water. Look at our problem. All the calcium sulfate going out was the calcium sulfate going in and that was equal to 50 kilograms per hour. So we know that we're going to have 50 kilograms per hour calcium sulfate anhydrous leaving the system how much water is leaving, and that will be the difference between these two, which will be equal to 3.309 kilograms per hour. If you remember, in the steps that we followed to solve mass balances, the last step or step 10 says, check your answers. The easiest way to check our answer in this problem is to look at all the streams of water leaving the system, adding them up and seeing if we get to what we put in. And if we add all these up, we see that it adds to 50 kilograms per hour. And we solve this mass balance. I hope this helped you.